Hey there, it's Carrie at Studio R12 Stencils and today we're gonna to take this $1.25 book from the Dollar Tree and make it into a personalized masterpiece. Okay, so we chose this book for a couple of reasons. The first one was because it's about wine. The second one is because of the background. I had kind of a plan in place and you can see that the color of my finished book is similar to the color of the book that I chose just makes it easier when painting to know that you're going to be in the same color palette so when you're shopping for your books at the Dollar Tree if you are going to be painting them make sure you take off that dust cover and see what the underneath looks like so I've laid out my book flat and the first thing we're going to do is paint a background the background color is going to be what shows through the crackle once we get our crackle medium on so we just chose a black acrylic paint we are using a poly foam brush. We have a really great video with possibly the best thumbnail on YouTube showing all you need to know about poly foam brushes, why we love them, how to choose one. I will make sure to link it above. So we are base coating our book just like we would base coat a project. We are sweeping away from the edges and pulling towards the edges that are closest to us so that we don't get a mess over on the edges of the book. Now when you're working on a crackle project you can decide if you want to do one layer or two. It will depend on if you want your crackle on what sh shows up underneath to be really bold or if you want it to be a more rustic look. For this project, I want it to be really bold, so we're gonna blow dry this and do a second layer. So something that's a little bit different in painting a book compared to painting a flat wood surface, which is what we normally paint, is you have to think about the spine of the book for a couple of reasons. You will want to get the text of the title of the book filled in, and with this project, that just kind of happens on its own with well, on its own with layer after layer of paint. But you also have to consider the spine. So with the creases in the spine, you'll want to make sure that you are blow drying and making sure that that area is really dry before moving on to the next step. So now we have our base coat dry and we are going to move on to the crackle. Now, before I get started with the crackle, I'm gonna let you know we have an amazing crackle tutorial and crackle playlist with several videos showing you the do's and don'ts of crackle, how to make really big cracks and how to make really small ones. I'm going to link that above. You are not going to want to miss that if you are interested in crackling. So we're going to put our crackle medium out on our palette paper. We are going to use the poly foam brush again, dip our brush into the crackle medium and just paint a light layer over top of our base coated book. So this is going to kind of apply like a glue. It is really thick, it's clear. We're gonna apply it to the spine and make sure we get into the creases and then to our other side. I'm gonna to have to get a little bit more. We have links for the products that we are using today listed below as well as some of the other videos that you're going to want to check out on our YouTube channel. If you like what you're watching today, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so that you can be notified anytime we add a new video or go live with all kinds of cool painting and stenciling and DIY crafts and different techniques. Okay, so now we have a layer of our crackle medium. I'm gonna throw my poly foam brush into our water and let it soak. You wanna make sure that you wash that out as soon as you are done painting so the crackle medium doesn't get stuck in there. I'm going to hit this with the blow dryer. Now the thing about the crackle medium that is different from the acrylic paint, when you first start to base coat your project, you'll notice that your acrylic paint is shiny and then goes to matte. We always use a matte acrylic paint. However, the crackle medium stays shiny. So it's one that you'll have to kind of feel around and see if it's tacky. If it's tacky, it means it's still wet. If it's not tacky, it means you can move on to the next step. So you could let this sit, go to lunch, go do some chores around the house, or you can hit it with the blow dryer to speed up the process. Okay, so we have this dry. It's not sticky and tacky anymore. I will tell you though that 
it takes a little bit longer for the crackle medium to dry compared to an acrylic paint. So just make sure that you're giving yourself time. Now comes the fun part. We are going to use, since we use the Deco Art medium, we're also going to use a Deco Art paint on this. We're gonna put it out on our palette paper and we are going to be very generous because we want a lot of paint on this project. <clears throat> You can see the areas where we put a lot of paint and really piled it on have the really big cracks in this project. On the back here, I did it a little bit lighter and you can see that the cracks are a little bit smaller. So depending on if you want smaller cracks or bigger cracks, will determine how much paint you want to put on here. I want the really big cracks, so I'm really loading up my brush here and then we are just laying it on thick onto our project. Now the difference between doing a regular stencil project and a regular background and doing this is this happens very fast. The crackle medium starts to crackle almost immediately. So you really don't have time to fix mistakes. You really want to get that crackle. You really want to get that paint on your brush and get it on there as, as fast as you can and as thick as you can so that the crackle can start to appear. And before I'm even done putting my paint on the right side of this book here, on the left side, the crackle is already starting to come out. Okay, so now we wait. So this second book that we're doing just now, you can tell that we got a little bit more consistent with applying our paint over top of the crackle. On the one that we did as a sample, you can see there's a lot of areas that are a lot thinner. The cracks are a lot smaller. And this one is more even across the board, but we did get some extra thick paint in some areas. So we did have to take the blow dryer to it so that we could get it dry so that we can move on to the next step. So we could just leave this like this. I mean, how cool is it? But since we are a stencil company, we are Studio R12 stencils, of course we are going to stencil over top of this. When we were trying to decide what stencils to use, we decided to go through stencils that we already had cut and see what we could put together. So what we're going to use to make this project is a clock stencil, a small tea towel stencil, which is one of the hottest trends right now, and then just a random word stencil. So on the one that I made for a sample, I chose a G for Carrie G and I grabbed it off of our girl stencil. But for this one, Steve has kindly requested that we do a P. So we went through some of our other stencils that we already had cut and we are going to do a, a P for him. We're going to start with the clock stencil. Now, this might take a little bit of time and a little bit of measuring. We are going to use our handy dandy T square. And we're also going to use our triple threat pen. It has a, a soapstone, white stone, it has a lead, it has um, a stylus, and then on the back, it has a, an eraser. So there's all kinds of good stuff on this. It is a great tool to have. We're going to use our T-square and line it up and we are going to mark the center of our project. Now, one thing you might have to do with this crackle, you might have to move it over a little bit so that you can see if the crackle's in your way of your mark, you're going to want to move it. Okay, so we're gonna go to four and a quarter. And then we're going to come here and mark it the same way so that we can get the exact center. And I actually 
nailed that one on the head. So kudos to me. I don't think I've ever done that before. So now that we have center marked, we know exactly where to put our clock stencil. We're going to line that dot up right in the center of our clock circle. And then we are going to use some stretchy tape and tape this down. Since our stencil is bigger than our surface, we are going to apply our tape through part of our stencil. We're gonna do it at the top and we're gonna do it at the bottom so it doesn't have any wiggle room. Now we had a lot of talk about colors today when we were trying to decide what colors we wanted to use for this project. We weren't sure if black was gonna to be too much because we had the black crackle but we tried some things out and really ended up loving what the black looked like on top of the black crackle. So let's talk about stencil basics. We are using a dry dome brush. The shape of the dome is key to stenciling. When you use a flat brush, you have more chances of bleeding under your stencil, which is the number one complaint of stencilers. We're using a dry brush. We're using dry paint, which means we're not watering it down any. We're scooping some paint onto our brush and then coming over to our paper towel and offloading some of the paint onto our paper towel. The goal is to have a really dusty layer of paint when you are stenciling. I'm also going to grab our multi-masker. You can use tape to take off, tape off your project, but this guy is super handy. It's a piece of mylar. You can move it, you can shape it. There's all kinds of different shapes. And I'm going to do a swirling motion on the inside circle of my clock. And I'm just going to move my multi-masker around as I go so that I don't get any paint in those Roman numerals. Okay, so now we're gonna peel that off. I have a couple little areas that I still got a little bit of the paint on that I didn't quite mask very well. I'm gonna go ahead and erase those. Just wipe it off. You can use your finger to wipe it off. You can use a paper towel to wipe it off. But accidents happen and we wanna make sure that we are letting you know how you can fix them just like we do. So now we have our clock. So the reason we did the clock first was so that we could know where to place our letter. So there's a couple things that you can do when you are trying to get your letter centered. You can straighten it up to the edge of the book. You can use your T-square. You can just eyeball it on the letter. I'm just gonna eyeball it here. Now, we have a stencil over the top of our book, but it's still here across the bottom. So I'm going to take the stencil down to the bottom of the book here but I am going to come up here and tape the stencil here through the L's so that it doesn't have any wiggle room. So on this book, we did a drop shadow. So let me teach you some quick lessons on drop shadow. Our main color for the drop shadow is going to be a red. So I'm going to get our deep red. This is one of our most popular colors that we use, especially at Christmas time for all of our Christmas projects. We have several videos and I believe even a playlist on drop shadow. I will make sure to link that above for you so that if you want to see how to easily drop shadow without having to do it by hand and using stencils, guys, this is so easy. I personally would never have drop shadowed if I didn't have the option of doing it with stencils. So what we did here was we just made a quick, light, dusted layer of our main color. So now what we're gonna do, we are going to blow dry this real quick. You want to make sure before you move a stencil that your, that your paint is dry, otherwise you have a chance of smearing it. So let's talk about drop shadow. The beauty of drop shadow is you can do it whichever way you want. You can do it up to the left or the right, down to the left or the right. I tend to go down to the right. So I have my stencil lined up where my P was. I'm gonna drop it down to the down and then I'm gonna pull it to the right just a smidge. So again, we're gonna go down, 
and to the right. And then we're going to go ahead and tape it down. Our drop shadow color is black. So we'll go back into our black. We will offload. And then this time I am going to stipple. I want this black just to be a really deep black. The black covers the red very quickly. Okay, so now we have our black, our drop shadowed portion of our stencil. Let me peel this back and show you what it looks like. So now we kind of have a reverse drop shadow. We have the P a little bit to the left and then we have the black. However, we want to realign our stencil. The whole reason we painted that P in red was so we would know where to realign our stencil once we were ready to go back and paint that top layer. Okay, so now we have our stencil back in place. Now, let me talk a little bit about color here. So on the original that I did, I just re-stenciled the red over top of the black. On this one, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Painting a red on top of anything can be very difficult. So what we like to do when we are using red is to use a neutral color over top of the dark color and then that will let that red pop. You're going to want to do the same thing for any color, especially reds, oranges, yellows, that don't have much pigment. But any color that is going to be lighter, if you're doing a drop shadow, if you're trying to paint a light color over a dark color, having that neutral color between them will really help the color pop. So we're using a gray here. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to stipple on the gray. Now the reason I chose gray over a white, because white would give us a really big pop. However, when you paint red on top of white, it turns pink. So we always choose a gray rather than a white when we are doing a red. So now that our gray is dry, we're going back to our base coat, our red. We're going to go ahead and stipple over top of here. Okay, are you ready to see the big reveal? Let's peel off this tape. And then we have our amazing P with the drop shadow. I have to say, I really love how that looks. Check out the difference in the G and the P. So with the G, I just painted the red over top of the black. But with the P, I painted the gray layer between them. And you can really tell the difference. The P on with the, the P and the red really pops a little bit more than what the black does. Okay, so the last step in our project is adding the tea towel stripe, the flower sack stripe. It is a super popular trend on art, on home decor, on all the things and we've really been adding it to all the projects that we've been painting. And we can make it super easy, you guessed it, with a stencil. So we have our tea towel stripe in several different sizes. On this project, I used the small one just because it was one that we already have cut, but we also have the larger one. And I told the guys I was super proud of myself because once I lined up the larger one on my first project, it was spot on. And with this one, since it's smaller, I had to move it. So I gave myself a little pat on the back for that one. So there are several different ones that you can choose from. On this project, I am going to do the one here on the end. Now, one thing I did wanna tell you, I am reusing my stencils. So the first project and this project, I use the same tea towel stripe and I use the same clock stencil. Our stencils are reusable and we have a video that I will show you up above showing you how you can wash your stencils properly so that you can use them, use them, use them over and over again. And there are a couple things like when you're painting with red and when you're painting with glitter, you're definitely going to want to wash your stencils. So let's get this lined up here. The one great thing about the stencils that we chose is that with this cloth stencil, there is a little cutout hole, a little bridge right in the middle here, and that makes it super easy to line this stencil up without using a T-square or something to measure with. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some tape 
and put it right under that little piece of bridging. We're gonna do the center one first. And instead of using the multi-masker here, I am going to use tape to tape off the smaller stripes. Just because it's a really small area and sometimes using two of the multi-maskers can get really tough. So we can get this taped off and we are going to grab, oh, grab another brush. So I've gone through several brushes in this project. If you are new to stenciling, if you don't stencil very often, having a set of five brushes is a good idea. If you are stenciling several projects, having you know 10 or 15 brushes might be more up your alley. If you are stenciling for a living, if you are stenciling to sell, then you are probably gonna want 20, 25 brushes. And reason being is because once you finish your project, you are going to wash out your brushes and you have to wait until your brush is completely dry before you can start over. We have a brush cleaning video that I will also link for you to show you how to wash our dome brush along with several other popular artist brushes. Okay, so let's peel this off and check out our review and voila, look how amazing that is. And I was able to use the circle from the clock stencil to make sure that my stripe was dark enough to match the darkness and thickness of the paint on the clock. So that was super helpful. Now we're gonna peel the paint off of, peel the paint, peel this uh, tape off of the stencil and then we're going to put it back on. We're going to line up our thick stripe. I'm gonna put a piece of tape here on the edge and across the bottom here. And then I'm going to put a tape right down the center. This tape actually fits perfectly over top of what we just painted so that we can mask that off as well. So we decided to do a little bit of teal. We love a little bit of teal with our with our Christmas red, as we like to call it. But you can really use any colors. You can do any colors for your crackle, for the underneath of your crackle. And once we got this project done, we realized this would be a really great gift. It's a personalized gift. I sent a picture of it to my cousin after I finished it. And she's a book lover like I am and she loved it as much as I did. The guys all loved it. This would be a great personalized gift for a guy in your life if you have a guy who loves books. And we also talked about how amazing it would be to do a personalized journal with this. How cool would that be? A crackle personalized journal. I don't know if you're anything like me. I always have a hard time finding journals that I love, but now I know that I can make my own. Let's peel this back. And we do have one more thing we wanna do. I'm going to grab this clock stencil again. You can see I got a little bit of blue inside of my little clock area. We're gonna line up our bridging one more time. Put this down here. I'm gonna use this little brush, come into my black and just go over the areas of our circle just to clean that up a little bit. And there we go, friends. We have a Dollar Tree book that we spent a dollar twenty-five on, and now we made it a personalized project that you can give to a family, a friend. Anyone who loves books, you'll just repeat this down here and you're good to go.